Hi guys, and welcome to a new Mr. Fourth Dimension video. I'm about to uh, start a cool little project. Um, I don't know if I said I was going to do this. This is an idea I had at one point, and um, uh, my other project, uh, the um, the code editor project, I made a few videos for, but just live, I, 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 just recording me making videos and stuff. I didn't really want to. I didn't think they were as entertaining or as informational as I thought they'd be and I'm still learning what I'm doing. I'm making stuff up as I go on that project. So um, if I do ever if I do ever make videos out of that that'll be live streamed, which I can't do right now apparently because my computer uh, is too old. The other problem or the other idea I was gonna work on was a, a game project that's still in the works. So in the meantime this is a uh, this is a little project that I've been wanting to make. Um, for a while. You also get to see my um, my fly user system, which is just what I call my setup on computers. Um, so let's call this uh, Geo. 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 So that just set up an entire project, and then I can just do um, Geo to load that project up. That makes that the main project. It initializes the command line Visual Studio compiler stuff that I needed to do. Takes a little while the first time, and then I can switch between projects for free. Basically, after that, I hit two code. It'll take me to the code there, and then I say Emacs to open my Emacs editor up full screen automatically, which is nice. And then I'll make uh, geo.cpp, and this geo.cpp is automatically going to be um, compiled. Um, let's see. Just fill in this information real quick. Let's make that a zero one. I like to do my uh, proper full month month day to day year year system there. All right, and this is a uh, geo project for YouTube. All right, so here's what we're going to be working on. Uh, well, I'm going to be working on is I. I always thought it would be fun to just like work up the very basics of a, a geometry calculator. Start from the basics and, you know, as you build up, it's, for some reason, it, some of it seems hard, but when you, like, build up, just explore it, like, exploring little easy bits of geometry and building one thing up after another, the, I've, the way I've done it on paper, at least, it looks like it just sort of comes together nicely. So... I'm just going to wing it and explain my decisions as I go, but basically this is me exploring ideas on geometry and I hopefully can turn this into something later on that's like a useful geometry collision thing for a game project or for rendering cool stuff, I don't know. Um, but for now it's just an exploratory bit of fun. Um, first thing I want to do is set up some... Uh, I'm going to set up some of my basic, um, some of my basic environment stuff that I'm used to by now. So I'm going to grab this file, um, grab everything out of here. I'm going to pop that right at the beginning. Probably get that moved out into a new file soon. Um, but basically what's going on, or I'll probably do that right after I explain everything here, actually, because I don't think I want it all laid out here. But basically what this does is um, it contains all sorts of macros and type defs and inline functions that I think are just uh, useful that I want in every project. Like I use U8, U64, U32, U16 as my type names. Um, I I64 I32 I16. Don't ask me why they're they go 864 3216. That's weird. I, I just noticed that. I don't know why they're in that order, but they are. Um, so those are what I use for types, just so I can have, you know, so I can control the type, the signed unsigned with just this I or U, and I control the width. I also do the bools that way, just because I don't really use bool 32, or I'll switch to bool 8 if I don't want a bit field, but I want to make them a little tighter for some reason, but, um, and I, I mean, I just have gotten used to this, um, set up over time, so it's what I'm doing now. Uh, this I got from Casey Muratori, who, uh, um, did Handmade Hero, or does Handmade Hero. I kind of like this system. 
I'm not sure if mine is exactly the same, since I think global var is different. The idea is to have different types of static so you can search for them more easily and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Uh, this is all specific to the editor project, so I'm going to take this all out. And we'll, if I have to develop any of that again, I will do so at that point. Um, so that's all reusable. This can all still be used. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to um, create another new file. We'll call this geo. Meta.h. And I'm just going to delete everything in that file. And I'm going to move this over there. So, I don't know if I'd call this a tutorial. It's sort of supposed to be educational um, in some sense of the word. It's supposed to be something you can use for inspiration, for new ideas, to see a programming style, learn what you, take what you like, you know, incorporate it into how you program, that kind of thing. Um, um, that comment, of course, clarifies, because I wouldn't know otherwise, I don't know, just for some reason you always put the what file you're dealing with at the top of the file in the comments, it's a thing everyone does, I don't know why. But anyway, on to the actual fun coding stuff. Um, first thing to do is to um, get something on the screen, I guess. I'll be coding in mostly C-isms. I'll be using the C standard library. Um, and uh, besides, you know, maybe overloaded functions, operator overloading, like I have const here, like I'm dealing with C++ stuff, um, but I'm mostly coding in C uh, style. So, um, let's see, build debug. Alright, so we've got our build environment set up, and I'm going to get the basics of the first thing we should do. Uh, let's start with a point. Struct geo point. All right, so point needs real. We'll do floats um, x and y. So it'll be two. That's point two d, I guess we should say. Yeah, and point two d. Um, what's a cool function that we could start with to get this job started? Let's do. Um, a distance function. So, real32 uh, internal. Um, that internal basically says this function doesn't need to be exported to another module of code or anything. And what I mean by module is not exactly going to be clear, but I mean translation unit, I guess. Um, yeah. So, we're going to do a distance function. Let's do geo uh, distance. And that'll take two geo points. Geo point two D P one at get geo for geometry. Or geology, because they have the same root word. Because the geometry was originally the measurement of the earth. That's a cool little factoid. Now let's get to the code. I'm going to need um math.h, I believe is the name of it, hopefully, uh, and this calculation is not too hard, it's um, p1.x minus p2.x, um, well, let's store that i30, no, i32, uh, delta x equals that, Real 32 delta y equals that. And then we return dx times dx plus dy times dy. Or, now we have to take the square root of this, but um, 
we're also going to want a distance squared function. Right? Um, the reason you want this is sometimes you just want to compare distances, find out who's the shortest distance away or who's the longest distance away, and for that you don't need to do this expensive square root operation. And then um, to make this an inline that just square roots a geodistance, or even, yeah, we'll just square root a geodistance for now. Now uh, the reason not to do that is because if it refuses to inline this for some reason, then we're paying for two function calls here. Um, we're paying for an extra function call, I guess, because we are also paying for this square root anyway, which isn't fun. But, um, but yeah, let's see if we have... Um, if, if that becomes a problem, then we can turn this into a macro, of course. Um, so, so that's, bas that's basically what it force it to be in line. So let's make a list of points, geo point 2D uh, points. And this is how I like to test some code is um, start by, don't worry about solving everything, you know. I mean, this is pretty obvious probably to an experienced programmer, but just type in some stuff that'll let you test um, test the basics without having to like also load in points in some other way or do some fancy thing. Just do an array of points, which should look like this, by the way. Um, and um, and uh, what's I saying? Do just get something that'll test it right away. Don't you know? Don't uh, go solving everything at once or anything crazy like that. Just simplest thing to make sure you're doing something sensible. You want to make sure that what you you've just recently done is working well and then you do another little bit um, and then optimize the, everything together and you know repeat so um, what we should do here is find out the size of point or a uh, point count I'll call it which is gonna be um, array count which is one of my macros I'll go show you the array count macro real quick. This I got from Handmade Hero. Array count says take in an array, which is a local, or like a local static array, not a dynamic pointer. This doesn't work for its pointer, but because it uses the size of the array, which is the number of bytes um, uh, of the type of the array. So in this case, this it's the size of this times the number of elements in that array. So in this case, five. Right. So if I take the size of the first element and divide that out from the size of the whole array, that gives me the number of elements in the array. No matter what type, no matter what size of the array. So that's just a nice way to, um, you know, use this on, it makes it ni your code nice and flexible because you don't have to specify a number here, and I can add and remove things here, and this stays correct, and then the array count just automatically updates, so it, all your code can, like, you don't have to change a hundred things if you want to add or remove stuff to this array here. So now we have the array count. Let's loop from i equals 1 to point count. Not i equals 0 because I'm going to do this in pairs, of course. I'm doing... Actually, I don't want to just do every adjacent pair. I want to do every pair in the whole thing. So we'll do for i32, j equals i plus 1. j is less than point count plus plus j. All right. So this will be visiting 1 through 5, and then this will visit, um, like, or 0 through 5, and then this will, on the first one, start at 1, because I don't want the distance to it's something self that's boring. Um, and then I'll print f distance from, let's see, d, uh, f to f to f f um, equals right that that'll be one line of this and then I'll just input um, uh, points i dot x points i dot y points i j dot x points j dot y 
and then we want the distance calculation. I got of course shorten this function down because that line is too long. There we go. Distance. Distance equals uh, geo distance. Um, points i points j. So that's going to compute the distance and plug it in there. It's going to show us the two points that we're looking at. All right. Um, when I hit Alt M there, that does the build, and it lets me mess with the errors right in place. So now I'm clicking there to see the errors. Um, right, I didn't include meta up here. Um, Geometa.h. Warning. Where's the warning? Um, recursive. Oh, geodistance squared is what we want there. Alright, I have to update that build batch file, but if we run it. So the distance from there to there was 5, the distance from there to there was 12, the distance from there to there was 13. Which is correct. The distance from there to there was some, you know, crazy thing that looks about right. That was 13, also correct. 5, 5, 12 is 12, correct. 5, some more crazy things that look about right should be the same as this. And then this one, uh, of course, is 5, because it's a difference of 5 there and there. And then um, some more crazy things that should be the same if they're just moving this x equal e bar on the other side of 2.5. So cool. That's the start of this project. Um, thanks for taking a look, and I'll see you guys next time.